When a wrestler leaves WWE in favour of signing with AEW, they hope that Tony Khan will realise their true talent and give them a push of a lifetime. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen, and whilst most names on this list are fantastic wrestlers in their own right, the respective runs in both AEW and WWE have been nothing short of underwhelming. Join us now as we look at 10 wrestlers who failed in both WWE and AEW. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive Lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Jake Hager. It's hard to truly say that Jake Hager, aka Jack Swagger, failed in WWE. He achieved great success in the company, including a world title victory in 2010, but the problem was that fans never saw him as a valuable player, and following his 2010 push being derailed, he was never the same again. Swagger had a ton to offer WWE in terms of his in-ring work, but it was his promo and character work that always seemed to hold him back. A fast forward to Hager's run in AEW, and Hager has been a staple of Chris Jericho's Appreciation Society. Jericho evidently values Hager's work as Hager is always at the side of the inaugural AEW champion, but the fans remain disinterested in whatever Hager is doing. In fact, the most compelling thing about him in AEW currently is that he wears a hat, which speaks volumes when it comes to the continued problems with Hager's presentation. Number 9. Tony Nese Tony Nese was a standout talent of 205 Live and notably won the Cruiserweight title at WrestleMania 35, but the problem with Nice was that his premier athlete persona was too generic for the WWE fanbase. This likely explains why he was released from his contract in 2021. Nice would eventually decide to sign with AEW and it looks like Tony Khan had major plans for the former WWE star. He'd be promoted as one of the hottest free agents in pro wrestling, and whether this was true or not is completely subjective, but it was without question a strong billing. Unfortunately, Nice's AEW run has fallen incredibly flat. He's been regularly featured on shows such as AEW Dark, and Nice has only won a handful of matches since joining the company. Ultimately, it looks like AEW signed Nice so he could put over other talent. Whilst this role is perfectly acceptable, it makes everyone question why AEW promoted Nice with so much hype when he first arrived in the company. Number 8. Leo Rush during his time in WWE, Leo Rush was given a number of substantial pushes. The most celebrated of these pushes was when Rush was assigned to be Bobby Lashley's new manager. This was a vastly underrated pairing, and during their time as a duo, Rush showed that he had fantastic promo skills, as well as showcased that he had the ability to get over with the audience. Unfortunately, WWE just never saw Rush above a certain level. Once the Lashley pairing was over, they moved him to the Cruiserweight division, where he remained for the rest of his WWE career. Rush would make the decision to signed with AEW in 2021 and, on paper, Rush seemed like a perfect fit for the company. However, in reality, Rush had a total of 5 matches during his contracted run in the company. Outside of his initial debut, he was never presented as anything special, anyone that could potentially ascend to the top of the card. Number 7. Sean Spears when Sean Spears, aka Ty Dillinger, was in NXT, he found a gimmick that truly resonated with the fans. The perfect temper persona was smart, and Spears was a great worker who could have great matches with anyone, no matter their experience in the squared circle. When the time came for the talented star to emerge on the main roster, the magic was lost. Vince McMahon clearly didn't understand what the perfect 10 gimmick was supposed to be, and it wasn't before long that Spears was relegated to jobber status. WWE had a massive opportunity with Spears. He likely wasn't going to be a world champion in the company, but he could have easily done well in a mid-card role. And in relation to Spears' AEW run, it got off to a red-hot start as Spears entered into a feud with Cody Rhodes. He would lose this feud and his AEW run quickly fell apart. Spears has had a number of lackluster feuds and storylines, and AEW would even pair him with the iconic Tully Blanchard, but this did little to get the fans to care about the once-promising star. Number 6. Parker Bordreau Upon signing with WWE, Parker Bordreau was immediately labelled as the next Brock Lesnar. Outside of looking somewhat similar to the former WWE Champion, the two had very little in common, and fans quickly realised this when Bordreau made his NXT debut. He would be rebranded as Harland, and he eventually joined Joe Gacy in the cultesque role which was both confusing and comical at the same time. During this gimmick, they would decide to shave Harland's head, which meant he now looked nothing like Lesnar, and the imposing presence he once 
had was completely gone. Following his WWE release, Bordreau would end up signing for AEW, ditching the Harlan persona, instead becoming a bodyguard of sorts for the Trustbusters. Bordreau has only wrestled a handful of times in 2023 on AEW programming, and Tony Khan prefers to put him on AEW Dark than AEW Dynamite, which unfortunately highlights that Bordreau simply isn't ready for the big time. Number 5. Colt Cabana Colt Cabana was a certified jobber during his time in WWE. Cabana would use the name Scotty Goldman and his run was so underwhelming that some fans forgot that he even had a run in the company. For several years after Cabana's infamous WWE run, he would sign with AEW. His run in AEW started off well as his storyline along with Brody Lee and the Dark Order was well received. But it was shortly after this inclusion into the stable that Cabana would be pulled from AEW television. In 2022, Cabana just wrestled one single match on AEW's flagship show, AEW Dynamite. It was rumored that this was due to CM Punk signing with AEW and Tony Khan wanted to avoid the two former friends having any conflict. However, it's worth pointing out that this has never been confirmed. It looks like Cabana has now become a member of the Ring of Honor roster and this is likely where he'll remain for the duration of his AEW career. Number 4. Lance Archer Lance Archer would use the name Vance Archer during his WWE run and unfortunately, Archer just wasn't ready at this point of his career to be a major player in the company. He had a great look, but his in-ring work just wasn't there yet. When Archer signed for AEW years after his WWE run, he had finally put it all together in the ring. Archer was a literal animal in the ring and his in-ring work was top tier. In fact, there were some initial calls for AEW fans to see Archer win the AEW world title, but AEW had other ideas. Now don't get us wrong, Archer is a great talent but AEW prefers to have him lose all of his major matches and this has drastically influenced how fans perceive him in the year of 2023. Archer is yet to have a featured match on AEW Dynamite in 2023 and he's often found on shows such as AEW Dark. AEW clearly don't see Archer ever ascending to solidified main event level status in AEW which is a shame as Archer is one of the finest talents they've had under contract. Number 3. Andrade at one point in time, it looked like Andrade was going to be a top star in WWE. His NXT run was truly magical and his matches with Johnny Gargano were universally beloved. When Andrade moved to the main roster, he was given a number of pushes but they never went anywhere and Vince McMahon didn't value enough to push him past the mid card. Upon signing with AEW, Andrade hoped that things would change. But they didn't. Andrade has been given nonsensical storyline after nonsensical storyline in the company and he even has the likes of Vicky and Chavo Guerrero manage him. Andrade is evidently unhappy in AEW, so much so that he often references his disdain for the company across his social media platforms. AEW are unlikely to ever change their stance on Andrade's position in the company and he may have to wait until his contract expires to reevaluate his options. Number 2. Keith Lee Keith Lee being released from WWE in 2021 was truly shocking. Lee was a great talent and he was a former NXT champion, so it was confusing that WWE had dropped the ball on him. When Lee signed with AEW, fans firmly expected Lee to be an instant main eventer, but something has just been missing from his presentation. Some fans believe that Lee's in-ring work has regressed, and some fans on social media even believe that Lee has quote-unquote given up. Lee has a storyline on AEW TV currently that has received major criticism. This is now sporting a cape and is entering into a partnership with Dustin Rhodes. Lee claimed in a podcast interview that this new look is a middle finger to society but that message unfortunately isn't coming across in Lee's work on television. And number 1. Miro Miro aka Rusev had a successful run in WWE so it would be unfair to call his WWE tenure a complete failure. However, it's hard to argue that Rusev could have been so much more in WWE in particular during the peak of the Rusev Day storyline which could have easily seen Rusev turn into a fully fledged main event talent. But in relation to his run in AEW, it's been a mixed bag. His run with the TNT title was brilliant but since losing the title, Miro has been in a state of limbo and he's simply waiting for AEW creative to come up with something for him. Miro has been openly critical in relation to his AEW presentation via social media and it's truly baffling that the two largest wrestling companies in North America have dropped the ball when it comes to making Miro a main event level attraction. But there you have it folks, 10 wrestlers who failed in both AEW and WWE. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.